Let's get ready to rumble. Like it is time, guys. This is the moment that we've been talking about for a long, long time. How long have we been talking about all this? Commissions and buyer agent commissions and what's going to happen and what might happen. Like how long have we been talking about it? And it's finally here. They removed the buyer agent commission field out of MLS a couple of days ago. We had just had to get a bunch of addendum signed by sellers that we have listings with, um, you know, Biden by the new rules and all that good stuff. And I mean, like, does it feel surreal that 40 years of the way that we've done business has literally just changed instantly in a matter of seconds? Uh, this is this is surreal. <laughs> and here we are. And let me tell you something. I just I just want you to know, because I know there's a lot of confusion. Nobody knows what to do, what's going on. Let me just let me just ease your mind for a second before I dive into this interview here um, with Michael Ketchmark. And that is this. The principles of the business are not changing, ladies and gentlemen. Our job is to get out here and serve as many people as we can, helping them buy and sell real estate. Uh, there's 90 percent plus 90 plus percent of the general population that buy and sell homes in America use a real estate agent by choice, by choice. Why is that? It's at an all time high. Uh, although we the, the, the amount of information consumers have is also at an all-time high, but yet more people than ever are using real estate agents. Why is that? Have you ever really sat and thought about why that is? I'll tell you why it is. The more information they have, the more confusing it seems, the more, the more Chinese-like it seems, and the more that they need someone to help decipher all the information. And that's literally what's happening. We're in an age where people need real estate agents more than ever, but yet we're in such a litigative country um, that we're put in this situation where, where literally we're going to end up with more unrepresented buyers, more unrepresented buyers. Now, hey, like the way that I'm going to run my business and I, I like I'm, we're all still trying to figure this thing out. But the way that I see it, my business model would be simple. A buyer comes to me, I'm going to represent them and I'm going to take whatever I can get on the seller's side. I'm not going to charge my buyer anything on top of that. I don't know if that's right or wrong against the rules. I, I have no clue. I can't get a straight answer. I've asked everybody, right? And I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments below about you guys' opinions on this, but it's just opinions. Like, I don't know. And 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 in this interview with Michael Ketchmark, there's a lot of I don't knows. There's a lot of I don't knows. But the one thing that he did say several times is that commissions are coming down, right? Commissions are coming down. He said it a couple of times and it, it's what he feels like will be the fruit of his labors to see disruptors come into this industry, drive commissions down, Zillow get the legs cut out from under them and, and homeowners pay a lesser commission, right? But he didn't talk about home buyers, right? Who are going to end up paying more, right? If they, if they pay their agent on top of the price. You have to think about that, right? The prices aren't going to go down because of this. Home prices aren't going to go down. Sellers are going to sell for as much as they can sell for, right? And then, and then, like what the law, like the plaintiffs and lawyers expect the home buyers to pay like their agent fees on top of that or go unrepresented, which is going to do what? Cause more lawsuits. And what do you need when there's more lawsuits? Bing, bing, bing. Lawyers. So it, it, it's a wild world that we live in that like the way I see it is like, it's almost like, okay, you guys were doing this conspiracy and all these big corporations were benefiting from this conspiracy type activity. But yet in my, the way I see it, the same group that is litigating against the group they say is conspiracy is literally in a conspiracy to create more conspiracy, right? If you litigate one industry into submission to cause complete chaos around more unrepresented buyers that's going to cause more lawsuits that you're going to have to continue. Like I see the same group of lawyers representing buyers down the road. It's insane. And what's even more crazy in my mind, because like I ran a calculator and, and as far as I can tell, the sellers uh, that were the plaintiffs in this huge lawsuit are going to make like five to $10 a piece. And you know the the law firm is, is is making what hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions. Um, it's a wild, wild world that we're living in. But if you think of both models, if you think of the old model, right? The old model where every buyer had representation, 
And you look at the new model where they're they're going to have lesser rep they're going to have lesser representation, right? No matter how you slice it up, either either they're going to have to go with a discount broker because you can't get as much anymore or you're going to you're going to go unrepresented because you just don't want to pay, so you're going to go un there's going to be a a a much higher percentage of unrepresented buyers in the market. What what would you rather have? What would you rather have? Well, we're going to help homeowners pay less uh, commissions. Well, what about when they buy their next home, right? What does that look like? And that's something that I haven't heard from, from their side. It's like, okay, you're, yeah, you're, you're good. Like homeowners are going to pay less. Like we're already doing it. We're charging less commission because we're only charging the seller side on the commission. But the question for that group is what about, what about the buy side? Like, how are you helping them? Because the way I see it, you're only hurting them. So like I get like we're going to help people and we're going to help the sellers but but what are you doing on like for the buyers? And that's where I feel like okay, you guys are making hundreds of millions. Why don't you create a fund with all that money that you made? Why don't you create a fund that helps these buyers? Right? <laughs> these buyers that are going unrepresented, these first-time home buyers that can't scrape up the down payment, need a real estate agent more than anyone because they've never bought a house, they don't know what they're doing. You see, this is the kind of predicament that you guys are putting us in. But it, I digress. In this article here, he talks about he is watching our every move and you better watch out. You better not cry because they coming for you, right? And to the, 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 the kicker, the cherry on top was that this could turn into a criminal, right? These actions of breaking the antitrust, you know, settlement here, he talks about could turn into a criminal, a criminal case. So, so let's dive in here. Because I feel like the reason I wanted to read this entire thing is because I read it and I think it's super beneficial to understand the vibe of what's happening here, right? And what we look at, what we look like right now in this very moment after the date has come and went, what we look like, we need to pay really close attention here because again, it seems like the entire industry is more interested in protecting themselves from future litigation than giving great service to the clients. And I find that just, just utterly disturbing that that's the direction that I feel like we're going. Like the energy that I feel is that we're moving towards, you know, we want to do everything we do to make sure we don't end up in court again, right? Versus actually giving our clients the best service that we possibly can. I find that sad, but but true because this is the this is this is the this is the world that we live in all right so let's dive in here michael catchmark every move you make every step you take we will be watching you in a phone interview lead plaintiff's counsel michael catchmark weighed in on the consequences of violating the nar settlement zillow's business model and the monster case that remains yeah there's a big old case on the back end there so <clears throat> attorneys for the home sellers plaintiffs in multiple antitrust cases will be keeping a close eye on how the real estate industry rolls out business practice changes to comply with the National Association of Realtors proposed settlement this week and looking to make examples out of the brokers and multiple listing services who violate the deal. That's according to Michael Ketchmark of Ketchmark McRae, uh, lead plaintiffs uh, counsel for the case known as Sitzer Burnett. The only suit among about two dozen filed in, uh, nationwide that has gone to trial, that suit resulted in a multi-billion dollar jury verdict in the favor of the plaintiffs and against NAR, major real estate franchisors, Keller Williams, Anywhere, Remax, and Home Services of America. In March, NAR filed a proposed settlement with the court agreeing to pay $418 million and institute MLS rule changes, including a prohibition on listing brokers making offers of compensation to buyer brokers on MLSs, sellers no longer being required to offer buyer broker compensation, and a requirement that brokers and agents sign contracts with buyers they're working with before buyers tour homes. NAR gave MLS until August 17th to implement those rule changes. Prior to the deadline, Emin caught up with Ketchmark to ask what his team is doing to prepare for the changes. In a phone interview, he told Emin what the plaintiff's attorneys would do against those seeking to go around the settlement provisions, responded to requests, and sanctioned uh, different interpretations of the deal's business practice. Uh, changes set out his hopes for how the deal would affect Zillow's referral based business model, right? For how uh, his hopes, his hopes for how the deal would affect 
Zillow and revealed the monster case that remains if the NAR settlement uh, receives final approval in November. So here we go. Right. So the Inman reporter says we're gearing up for this August 17th deadline and wanted to check in to see what you're doing on that end. Uh, what 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 is it that you have to get done by that deadline, if anything? Catch Mark says we've been monitoring what's happening in the industry with a lot of these webinars and training programs, just seeing how people are interpreting this and what their intention is. Uh, if anyone thinks they're going to be able to avoid the application of the settlement agreement and the law by creating some new forms or hiding this cooperation on new websites, they're wrong. If we get any sense that these people are cooper or, or corporations are doing that out there uh, as a way around this, we plan on taking swift legal action. But from our standpoint, everything's just been set in motion and we're sitting back waiting for it to take effect. We believe it's going to take a while for the free market to adjust to this and for us to see commissions start to come down. But we fully expect that's what's going to happen. What do you see in these webinars and forums that's concerning? There's a huge desire with some of these large corporate brokers to continue this because there are literally tens of billions of dollars that that have been fleeced out of the pockets of homeowners. Um, and there's hope that they can continue to do it, but they're not going to be able to. The agents and brokers we're talking to understand this. We're starting to get back reports, uh, reports back from agents and brokers in large cities that they're already seeing the commission starting to drop. I remain hopeful that that's exactly what we're going to see happen, but it's going to take a while. It's been reported at this seismic shift uh, that in, in the real estate industry, the biggest thing to happen in centuries. It's not something that just changes overnight. It's going to take a little bit of time for the free market to adjust, but it's going to happen. In what ways do you think they're still trying to continue? He said, people uh, were talking about trying to set up third-party websites for commission sharing or that they could create um, new kinds of forms that they have that they don't put on MLS uh, or do things behind the scenes. The rubber is about to hit the real is, is about to hit the road. Uh, and really, that's what's going to be important to us. It's not what people are talking about, what might happen, but what does, in fact, happen. There just needs to be a loud and clear warning to everyone who's out there that they need to be careful because it's not going to be the settlement agreement that's going to have uh, the force of law. But as anyone can imagine, the Department of Justice is very interested in seeing how this uh, is going to play out. And we fully expect the DOJ to be actively involved in shutting down any attempts to create new legal conspiracies. I'll get back to that. But in terms of the forms you mentioned, are there any provisions you're seeing that you're concerned about? Right now, I don't have any concerns about what I've seen out there or what I've heard, but I, I hesitate to take any position on what actual forms are going to be there because I've seen so many different drafts. But you can imagine there's all these different local MLSs with all these co competing uh, entities uh, that are that are out there. Ultimately, what's going to matter to us are the forms that are actually used and replaced with not what people are saying may be done or drafts or the ones that are done. When this comes into effect, if there are MLSs out there that are using forms that we think are in violation of the agreement or that violate the law, we're going to take swift action. The California Association of Realtors took out broker to broker compensation on their forms. Is that an example of something uh, you would like to see? Or is there still something concerning about their forms? The back and forth that we've seen with some of these large associations like provisions being in there, provisions being taken out, those are the types of things that we're talking about. But until I actually see the forms that are being used and the new documentation that's being used, it would be irresponsible for me to comment in a vacuum because I have no idea what if I know I did if what I've heard about or what I've seen reported is ultimately what's going to be there. I think that there's a large desire in the industry to have plaintiff's attorneys somehow bless this material, bless this material. We're not going to do that until we see how it's written and how it's used in the real world. But if we find these things that we think are in violation of the agreement, we're going to take action. You mentioned different interpretation of, of the new rules. What interpretations are you seeing? Not a day goes by where someone doesn't send me some type of Instagram or a TikTok or a Facebook page or something in the X or social media where it's saying, or someone's saying, hey, this means that or this means that. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of that. 
there's been some forces out there that have been created uh, that 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 have created some uncertainty as to what the requirements are. But the requirements are real straightforward. You can no longer use MLS as a vehicle to, to uh, for sharing comp, uh, cooperative or fixing prices. If anyone thinks they can get around that, they're wrong. If we see anything out there uh, where there's an attempt to violate that fundamental premise of this settlement agreement, that's what we're going to take action against. I don't know if you saw the article I wrote about our on our MN Connect conference where the panelists on stage are saying, don't make preemptive offers of compensation. Just say your seller will consider all requests and wait for them to, uh, for the buyer to put it in their purchase agreement. Then somebody in the audience said, hey, uh, we're do, are we doing it wrong? Because our buyer agents are calling the listing agents to ask what the sellers are offering. So is that wrong? And he said, and, and he asked Michael Cashmark, is that wrong? You know, basically, is it wrong, you know, for, you know, should they put it in the offer? Or should they call the listing agent? You guys, uh, if you if you get my emails or, or follow me on Instagram, you know how I feel about calling the listing agents to ask what they're offering. Um, Michael Ketchmark said, we're not going to weigh in on those hypothetical questions. My involvement uh, in this for the last five years um, has told me that the resolution of the right or wrong is, is so fact dependent upon what actually is happening. I know when the plaintiff's attorneys say something that the industry can reply upon that, can rely upon that, uh, and they can use that or they can think that that's, that guides their behavior. But the guiding behavior that needs to be worried about is they can't violate the antitrust laws. They can't use MLS or those vehicles in a way for announcing that they're sharing co uh, cooperation uh, or setting the commissions. Or if anyone's doing that, there's going to be a problem. Whether or not specific behavior violates the terms of the settlement agreement is not going to depend on the circumstances um, of when it happens. Uh, we're going to call balls and strikes when the ball crosses the plate, not ahead of time. So preemptive offers of compensation are allowed under the settlement. If the seller decides, and this this is them and asking, right? They're they're asking, is preemptive offers of compensation allowed under the settlement? If a seller decides, I do want to offer the buyer agent, and I want you to not put an MLS, but you can put it on a flyer from a house or on the listing broker's website or anything else. And Michael said, I don't know. I'd have to look at what's being done, how it's being done, and apply it to the terms of the settlement agreement. I'm not going to just say yes or no on a question like that. It's going to depend upon the facts. Inman says, the settlement says they're not prohibited outside the MLS. And I just want to know if that means they're allowed. And what they're talking about is the, is the can you offer, is, is, is Catchmark okay with agents, uh, uh, you know, agents advertising the seller will pay the buyer agent commission outside of MLS? And he says, even if someone's something's not prohibited, right, it doesn't mean that the way they're doing it is OK. If a seller is being coerced or forced into making an offer of comp a cooperative a cooperation because of fear of steering, there's all kinds of factors that could go into creating some type of illegal sharing provision. It's just going to depend on the facts and how it plays out. Uh, the MN reporter says, you mentioned you're going to be looking at what happens. Are you doing anything this week or next in terms of prepping for this deadline or deciding how you're going to uh, police it? He said, sure, there's a team of lawyers from all of this, uh, from, from all the different law firms that are involved in this. Several plaintiffs law firms with the entire teams of attorneys. We have weekly calls and we're taking very aggressive steps to prepare for the launch of this. We plan on staying on top of it as it rolls out. They said, can you elaborate on the steps you're taking? And he says, nope. Other than I would tell the industry that they better mind a P's and Q's and comply with the law because this is a hard fault for change. A tremendous amount of effort and energy went into went in, uh, went to obtain uh, this on behalf of the homeowners and sellers in our country. And we're going to make sure that it's carried out the way it needs to be carried out. I don't think there should be any doubt in the industry of our sincerity uh, when we say that what we're what we're going to do, uh, but we're not one to let other people know what our preparation is other than we're preparing. How soon do you think we'll see? Uh, will that preparation be visible in some way? Hopefully the results will speak for themselves as we start to see these sales go through and as we start to see commissions dropping and we start to see the free market work and disruptors come in and change the industry. It will be more the fruits of our labor that we'll see instead of the actual labor. Will there be any uh, immediate repercussions for MLSs or brokers who break these rules? 
yeah, for anyone breaking the rules or violating the agreement, we're going to look at the opportunity to make examples out of anyone who's playing fast and loose with the law. The last thing that we're going uh, to want to be is the person that does that uh, or the, the corporation that does that. I'm happy to have someone serve as an example of what happens to people who violate our antitrust laws. Hopefully, what's going to happen is that uh, it's not going to happen. Hopefully, we're going to find that these MLSs start complying. I've always maintained that I really believe that it's in the best interest of the industry, of the real estate industry, and it's the best interest of these brokers to compete in the free market. When they do that, I think the strong brokers who are bringing quality services and doing that, either on behalf of buyers or sellers, that they're going to be rewarded and they're going to be paid. People have always been willing to pay for quality service and quality care. If you're buying a home, you're willing to pay for that. If a seller wants to negotiate with their agent in the free market, they can do so. Let's just let the free market work. Hopefully, in the end, I think that the industry is going to realize that this is a good thing for the industry. You mentioned potentially making uh, an example of brokers or MLSs who are breaking the rules. What kind of actions would you take? Litigation. Of course, litigation, lawsuits, court orders, injunctions, get the Department of Justice involved if they're willing to do so. What people need to realize is that antitrust laws, uh, they're not just civil, but they're also criminal in nature. And at some point, this behavior can cross over into the criminal realm. Would you have to do anything special in order to have a, a crossover into the criminal realm? We would prefer um, it to, to we would refer it to prosecutors if we believe that there's some illegal criminally uh, something illegally illegal criminally that's happening. So the prosecutors would have to file something as a criminal case. Yep, that's not something we do. What would you anticipate the DOJ would do? I don't know. I would never presume to speak for the DOJ and I would never make predictions, but I have met with a lot of the high level folks at the Department of Justice, as well as frontline attorneys. And this is a dedicated group of people who've given their lives to the enforcement of these laws. They really, truly want to bring about change here for American homeowners. I fully expect that they're going to be prepared to take action, um, even unrelated to the settlement. But the change is going to come here whether people want it or not. You think you're going to be what you think you're going to be watching? I had to read that twice. Like, OK, you, of course, he's going to be watching. Do you think they're going to be watching? OK, do you think they're going to be watching the DOJ? I would imagine so, but I'm not basing that on any inside information. Just my belief to go back to the actions you might potentially take if someone's violating this. Is there is there going to be some kind of grace period like a week later or if they're breaking the rules, then he said, depends upon the severity of it. We have a whole arsenal of things we could do as simple as sending out an email, making a phone call, sending a case and a cease and desist letter to filing a lawsuit. It just depends on how severe the situation we believe is and what the appropriate response is. But by law, uh, by, but by and large, my experience with the industry since the settlement came about um, is it is good, decent, hardworking men and women who truly care about doing the right thing. I've always maintained that the real estate agents have been the victims of what's happened here at a higher corporate level. And the large corporations, the large corporate brokers are the ones who set this up and pulled a lot of this money out of the pockets of the local real estate agents. I found that statement very interesting. What are you talking about? That the broker, the huge brokerages pulled the money out of the local real estate agents? Okay. That's what people forget. Um, is that the vast majority of this money was stripped away from the local real estate agents, and that was used by these large corporate brokers and companies like Zillow and others. So as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, okay, so you, well, you can't be worried about large corporations stripping money from local agents when you're literally talking about hoping that commissions come down. It's a little contradicting. My belief is when it's not a little contradicting, it's very contradicting. Uh, my belief is when it returns to local brokers and returns uh, to local control, that it's going to be better. I could truly believe these local agents are going to do the right thing and they're not sitting around trying to find ways to violate the law. They just need to be skeptical if you have a large corporations coming in and pushing forms on them or pushing documents on them that are going to expose them to problems. When you say the vast majority of these funds have been stripped away from the agents, what exactly do you mean? 
He said, I saw how this narwhal was being used by companies like Zillow and others to say, hey, if you get a referral, you have to pay back a huge portion of the commissions back to these corporations and things like that. It really was being taken out of the pockets of the local agents. Now, I kind of agree with that with Zillow, not the brokerages. I mean, the big brokerages actually give you a better deal on boutique brokerages and for the most part, as far as like broker fees and splits. But as far as Zillow goes, Zillow is taking a buyer. If you get Zillow leads and you're paying like 30, 40% in a referral fee. Yeah, for Zillow. And the next question is, you haven't sued Zillow yet, as far as I know. And he said, nope, our belief is that the changes that are taking place here are going to stop that. Uh, what Zillow was doing was going in there and using these local MLS rules, and they set their business model up on the top of this illegal conspiracy. They benefit from this illegal conspiracy. Now, hopefully, we just cut the legs out from under that. You mean for them to not be able to get referral fees from buyer agents? And he said, yep. So that's part of his mission is to make sure that Zillow doesn't get referral fees anymore. The whole system was set up so that commissions were being established at a 6% and being split. And then the entire network was set up in order to benefit from that. I think this is disrupting all that and changing all that. Have you had any issues with the settlement uh, process so far? He said, nope, there's a lot of work associated with it. Um, there's a lot of work associated with it. There's a lot of hard effort that's been put in by attorneys on all sides. And my dealings uh, so far with all the NAR attorneys and all the attorneys for the large corporate brokers that they've been working hard and trying to do the right thing. I'm personally excited and the plaintiffs uh, attorneys are excited to see this effect take place and for us to see how it plays out. Ultimately, the goal is to benefit home sellers in America and to bring down the cost of commissions in America. Time is going to tell whether or not that happens or not, but I fully believe that it will. How soon do you think it'll happen? I think it'll start happening anecdotally. Uh, I'll say we'll start seeing anecdotally evidence on it relatively quickly. But to me, it'd be interesting uh, to look back at, at a year and do a comparison. You don't have to shift this very much for it to result in tens of billions of dollars in savings because there's just so much money at stake. It's going to take some patience and some time. The hardest thing would be to predict uh, exactly how long it's going to take, but there's no question it's going to occur. Any updates on brokerages yet to settle? Nope. Other than um, I know that every day we continue to see emails from our team and new brokers that are settling. Dozens have settled, right? Oh, yeah. A whole host of smaller brokers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we making some money over here, son. A whole host of smaller brokers have reached settlements with us. In the coming months, you're going to see a flood of filings for approvals uh, from those. It just takes a while for all the process to take place. What are the biggest loose ends here still waiting to be tied up from this all this litigation? The next phase of this litigation, after all this is going uh, is over, is going to be our ongoing case against Berkshire Hathaway Energy, Warren Buffett's company. That's going to be the monster case. Trial is set for that in 2027. It's a ways off, but into the next year, you're going to start seeing litigation going on there. Our entire trial team is going to be turning our energy and attention to the Berkshire Hathaway energy and holding them accountable and liable for what's happened here. So just because home service is settled doesn't mean that Berkshire Hathaway energy has. That's right. In fact, a very significant part of the home services settlement was carving out our lawsuit against Berkshire Hathaway energy and allowing us to proceed and go forward against them. That's going to be the massive fight that remains. So they literally carved out the settlement with home service to make sure they could still go after the other behemoth, you know, the Warren Buffett company, Berkshire Hathaway. Do you think that'll settle anytime soon? Nope. It's our position that Berkshire Hathaway has sat on top of this entire conspiracy and benefited from it. Home services and all the brokers beneath them benefited from that. They're ultimately responsible and liable for this. We intend to prove that. And if we go to trial on that, the amount of damages will be in the hundreds of billions of dollars. My goodness gracious. Let's look at a, a few comments here. Um, Catchmark would be the ideal candidate for, uh, to file antitrust against the attorneys in the U United States with such a high hourly fees and retainers and settlements. The majority of the settlement should go to the plaintiffs and the attorneys should only receive about 10% of best. That is something I agree to wholeheartedly. 
that that I, I don't know what they get. I mean, it's speculation. There's speculation that 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 they get, um, you know, 30, 40 percent. Does that mean they're getting, you know, three or four hundred million? And then how many people do you split that up with? I mean, from what I can tell, the the plaintiffs, actual the people that actually were the victims here, uh, quote unquote, got about five or ten dollars a piece. From what I can tell, I could be way off five or ten dollars a piece. The law firm got as far as I can tell, if it's 30 or 40 percent, a good three, four hundred million. How many people are we splitting that up uh, uh, with? And uh, there have been more smaller brokers settle. OK, so it's probably a lot more than the billion up to this point. And when they do the Berkshire Hathaway, he's talking about hundreds of billions there that's going to settle out for who knows what. We're talking about some serious money here for these lawyers. The plaintiffs should renegotiate their agreement with the attorneys um, like like um, like this. Uh, they're out there um, taken from citizens uh, of their due profits, paying millions to expert witnesses. Testimony is another that the plaintiffs uh, have no say in what they're being paid. Most definitely, most definitely an antitrust violation. Do you guys feel like the lawyers involved here are actually participating in antitrust uh, activities, you know, illegal antitrust activities within their business models. Um, let's see. I think what Catchmark and company haven't realized is that you can't sue people into working for less. You can sue people into leaving the industry. In some instances, that will be healthy for the industry. What I see now is that brokers are more concerned with the avoiding litigation than providing good service. It's exactly what I was saying. The stroke of genius for catch marking company is that the disruption that they're causing will create the opportunity for more lawsuits for them. The lawyers won, the consumers lost. That's that's what I was just saying. Um, this guy had a really long quote. Let's see. This guy just made enemies with over a million people, and he can't stop running his trap about about it, saying, "We're watching you, really." Typical lawyer that grossly overestimates nearly every facet about themselves. I hope there's a countersuit to hold attorneys like him accountable. Let's see how deep the pockets of all the firms are nationwide. Um, this guy, I'm not going to say the word, has some nerve saying that agents have fleeced money from their clients. Nothing like the pot calling the kettle black. That is true. Hey, Nar, great job in standing firm and not caving the fight on behalf of your people. You created this mess and all the extra work that came out of it. So what are you going to do to alleviate this fiasco you put us into? Do you guys feel like this is NAR's fault? Would love to hear your, your comments below. Let's see what Bonnie says. Can't wait until somebody starts um, policing the millions and millions of this lawyer and all those make off their plaintiffs. Okay, yeah, she's talking about the same stuff. Let's see. Let's see. And this is the last one. Sorry, but I'm still confused on this part as a property owner. Why does anyone get to dictate who and how much I'm willing to pay someone? And just as important as the homo as the owner of the real property, why can I not agree and sign off on an agreement? How I want to price and any compensation advertised. Everyone gets to decide how I should market and incentivize my own property? Question mark. What am I missing? And that's exactly that's exactly right. That's exactly right, Ken. It's it's a crazy world that we're living in, but this is the world that we are living in. Um, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about all this. I'm going to continue to keep you on top of this as we move forward and do everything I can. You guys know that have been following me for a long time. Uh, I always, I'm, I'm pretty loud and I don't have a filter. I say what I think and I hope that my content really helps you. All right. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, take care and keep selling.